Welcome to this video. This is coverage for the third round of the Norway chess tournament and uh, today probably has been the the most um, interesting round yet very interesting games and not so easy to um, to actually choose the game of the day. Yeah, maybe it was easy. I don't know. <laughs> it was um, it was um, at least a day with more than one really interesting game. Okay, let's see what happens. Starting with Swidler Topalov, I'll go briefly through all games or to four games, one a bit more detailed. Swidler Topalov, this I must be honest was the least exciting game of today's round. We got um, this somewhat strange line in the Sicilian where after e5 knight d7 we basically now in the French with white having um, <laughs> yeah, somewhat weird extra move, a4. This is the move given to white, which is probably not very helpful. Yeah, and um, it, um, at the end we had some trades here in this typical French structure. Yeah, white's move a4 is really not useful at all. And um, after a while we got a position, I thought, where white should be very, very slightly better. If we look at this, the pawn on d5, bishop on c6, they are not ideal. Probably it's not enough to ever Check. get anything serious going, but um, it was uh, at least a slight edge. Yeah, but black defended actively. At the end, they had a Check. rook end Check. game where um, also Swiller could have um, taken the pawn here Check. to get to this, but <clears throat> this is not... Uh, this is drawn, <laughs> or, or just the draw, not only on this level. I mean, not very difficult to hold. Um, yeah, not a very exciting game, more of a technical game. Um, probably worth looking at a bit more if you um, have the time, but there are other games um, to, <laughs> to look at here in this round. Next game is um, Grishuk Aronia. And this is a funny game. I can tell you right away that this is a uh, game which really made me laugh. Okay, we have um, an English opening, the Mikenas variation with e4. That's a very interesting line for white actually. And one reason why this move order, knight f6, e6 against c4 isn't so popular anymore. White um, has some, some decent chances to emerge with an initiative in this line. And this is in fact the main line that we, that we got here. We see that white has a good center, which is normally attacked by e5, here played by Aronia, knight f3. I think this move, knight c6, is a bit uncommon. Black normally just takes on d4. There, there are various lines after this. Bishop g5 is one, but um, very often we also get you also Check. get this this type of Check. position where white is just very slightly more comfortable, but nothing ter terribly uh, dangerous. Yeah, knight c6 is a bit uncommon, and uh, we see that white is gaining some time here in the center. Black retreats, so he's um, playing on the fact that. This pawn structure is not ideal. On the other hand, white has some development uh, in his favor, of course. H4, yeah, this is protecting the bishop and has a second idea. Knight d7 and bishop d3. Yeah, and in this position, in this position, it's a um, <coughs> black's move, obviously, and Aronian played e4. After this move, I pretty much encourage you to pause the video and um, and uh, think for a moment what is white's best continuation here yeah note that look at the clock uh, clocks grishok had already spent quite some time before that while aronian was playing quickly look at the position and uh, try to determine white's best continuation okay so i'm going to tell you um, the first move is um, quite quite apparent, I guess. H5 looks uh, looks uh, totally normal, attacking the queen. If it goes somewhere here, let's say, yeah, white just takes e4, is a pawn up. 
great center, everything fine. Aronian played queen f5, still playing quickly. And now, did you also see the next move? This move now is the one that counts. And uh, Grisha played it. Rook to h4. <laughs> this is a very funny move. It uh, it attacks uh, e4. Yeah, obviously. And of course, it's a, it's a fork. But what happens? This is not possible. Very easy. Yeah. yeah but uh, what happens after this move? Yeah. Rook f4. <laughs> the queen is trapped. <laughs> after 15 moves with rook h4, f4, f5, black screen is falling. Yeah, this is this is totally funny. Yeah, and uh, what's also cute is what what are you doing here as black? Can you do something else? Let's say knight c5, for example. Still taking. Knight takes queen e2. And now rook takes e4 next is completely destroying black. I mean, look at this. This is just a just an attack here yeah, with with all pieces on the white side and black has <clears throat> nothing developed for example if we check look at this check yeah <laughs> just just one possible line which clearly shows black is uh, is busted yeah in the game um aronian decided to uh, to give the queen like that and uh, here white is really just a queen up for rook and uh, for rook and peace and with um, a decent technique white should win yeah and uh, grishok did a good job he never ever allowed anything uh, special to happen the main point is um, with material up here open up the position in a way that your king is not getting into any danger and uh, well aronian probably could have resigned earlier but okay why not Play on for a moment and see if the other side is, is faltering. Grishuk is bound to uh, to come into time pressure, <laughs> uh, no matter what the position is. But um, I'm going to play out the last couple of moves here. Aronian resigned. Yeah, just an opening disaster. I mean, he uh, played this very quickly, simply overlooking things. What I find which we find a bit remarkable that he played e4 so quickly here in this position. Maybe it was um, he confused something in his um, with his preparation or, or I don't know because obviously e4 leads to a crisis here. I mean, yeah, if you overlook h5, rook h4, which he which he did obviously, even if white is playing something else, it leads to um, a total crisis like queen e2, let's say. Yeah, this is obviously a very sharp. Uh, position yeah this is playable for white it's not bad or anything it's just the other thing is winning the queen so it's it's preferable but it's quite um, quite interesting that you played this so quickly because well you you need to i don't know i don't know your level of alertness should probably uh, rise up in this position but he still stumbled uh, right into the this 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 trap losing the queen quite remarkable so grishok with that um having two wins in a row he lost the first game quite um quite 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 um yeah badly with this time travel brander but after that two wins nice okay next game is uh, i think giri kromnik giri kromnik yeah we had a catalan opening oh it's a bit of a cheeky choice against kromnik him being the yeah the person who really brought the catalan uh, into the limelight starting um yeah about let's say 10 years ago around that okay so we have the main line absolute main line of the catalan here white has this choice a4 or queen takes c4 a4 is maybe the somewhat more ambitious move it leads to somewhat more complicated positions yeah and this is a typical setup that black often chooses against this a4 setup he wants to establish c4 uh, c4 b4 <laughs> for a piece probably the knight and um, the compensation let's say um from white white's point of view is the better central control white has some weaknesses on the queen side but he has good uh, a good central control 
Um, sorry, this was a bit too quick. What 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 really surprised me is how how uh, Giri now is playing this. He's playing Bishop D2. I mean, one idea of this move is is probably that this now <laughs> is uh, punished. But still, it looks like a strange move to me. Yeah. Um, to, to be honest, this is um, leading the whole thing here, the whole opening. It's leading to a, a fantastically complex middle game that um, is difficult to uh, to really look at with very little time. The main point is that Kromnik here played f5. Very ambitious move, but probably uh, probably a good move. Black is um, getting some, some sort of space advantage here, quite uncommon in the Catalan, but White has uh, chosen a somewhat somewhat strange setup. I mean, it does not look very harmonious to me. If we look at the position some moves uh, further, we see that Kromnik is uh, is completely concentrating his forces on the king side. He's got the the f file yeah, with uh, with doubled rooks. Bishops also pointing towards the king side. So black has all yeah all pointed to white's king. And we see that um, he also is giving up a pawn in the process for setting up this uh, this um, really active position. Um, it's not totally clear to me how to assess this. Computers like white, I mean, they they simply say probably okay a pawn, and I don't really see how I'm getting mated. Um, I am not so sure really if um, the computer's assessment. Um, here is correct. I mean, Black's play is uh, is at least super dangerous, as it's much easier to be Black here. You you know what to do. Check. You want to, yeah, concentrate your pieces near the king. And knight is already here, and you know just need the bishop to get into the play. And uh, Kromnik, um, after a few m more moves, if we just continue a bit. Yeah, here um, it, it gets really tricky. Ideas like bishop f5, queen e6, attacking h3, the d file. And um, it's really amazing. Giri relatively quickly now um, yeah, lands into, um, into a lost position. Check. It's, uh, it's happening around here. I need to look at my notes because it wasn't easy. Here, move 41, very often a problematic move. It seems that after queen e2 at least this is what um what houdini is um is um is telling me that this should lead uh, to um to an unclear position or let's say it says about equal i'll, I'll call it unclear because for humans it is not uh, really looking like an equal position maybe it's dynamically equal but yeah not at all easy to play it's not like a drawish end game or anything um, the thing is, White does not have many moves. He played this one, and it seems that this immediately leads uh, leads to huge problems. And the um, the problematic move is Queen to e6. This is setting up this massive pressure against h3, but also, and this is the more problematic thing, is uh, threatening Queen to b3. And note that white's back rank is also quite weak. If it was black's move, let's say white is doing a nothing move. This is very problematic. Well, bishop h3 is even stronger here after this. Yeah? Check. Check. Checkmate. Very, very nice checkmate. Yeah, there are all kinds of threats based on the weak back rank and always this this knight on f3, a5 is uh, just completely ignoring everything, so <laughs> so not really great. Um, yeah, after queen e6 here, it gets very, very problematic. White played queen e2. And in this position, actually, Kromnik is not playing the most precise move. He played g6. This probably preserves some advantage, but he could have taken here immediately, and this would have won quite convincingly, this type of position. The problem is if white is playing any uh, any non-check move here, <laughs> it's hard to play any non-check move really. Let's say this, yeah. The problem is that this is happening, and bishop f3 will finish right off. Rook h1 mate, or you will lose the queen. It's just uh, a deadly attack. 
So something like yeah. this needs to be played, and after Bishop f5, Black is is really uh, quite quite easily winning. This is um, check a case in point. Uh, the problem being that Bishop e4 is still a fantastically great move. Mate, yeah, and uh, this is also made next move so um very very difficult to to uh, to play this position as white it is it is lost by now um but chronic didn't take he played g6 and after that it seems that bishop takes f3 is at least not losing immediately it looks uh, it looks very very uh, problematic but exactly this does not seem to lose outright at least this is the engine evaluation the thing is, um, the next best move is, um, maybe I still should look at it a bit more, because at first I thought, isn't this still a win? But uh, funny enough, it isn't. I thought bishop g2 and rook d1, h1, isn't this still uh, a mate or something? The problem is white always has this kind of defensive try. And uh, while of course black is better, it's not totally clear that he's winning easily. In the game, just to compare things, there was rook c4 played, and after bishop a3, there was simply resignation. <laughs> yeah, there, there is absolutely uh, no move here that uh, can be played. After rook takes e4, for example, Check. black is taking and going here with queen h3 coming, or alternatively, check. this check. Quite easy. Yeah, and what else is there? I mean, what 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 move should uh, should White play? We can look at um, let's say play something like that. Uh, after that, Black can um, Black can take here. Check. Yeah, and here for example Check. can just do that. Yeah, Black has a very nice winning plan. Uh, not there. <laughs> to h3 and then bishop g2 mate. Let's say something like that. Yeah. Um, can you do it? No, this was a bit, a bit weird. Let's say um, there are some lines where you can actually allow the, allow the promotion. Uh, let's say a5, g5. I need to do it like that b5 and now h4 yeah this is this is the way to do it check mate and the mate <laughs> quite nice yeah so a win for kromnik um i think a, a really interesting interesting middle game where he had uh, this initiative brewing on the king's side and it was certainly much easier for black to play than for white um, even if um, you can find some sort of improvement with uh, with computer assistance, this is just um, a terribly difficult position to play for white. So I think a good win for Kromnik. Okay, the next game is... Yeah, you would have expected that Carlsen Caruana being the top game on paper, Caruana being the leader of the tournament after two wins and the world champion would be the game of the day it isn't i went for kayak in Akkestein, Akkestein. um but let's uh, do Carlsen and caruana first the problem with this is it is very difficult at the end and uh, with my time limited i cannot really tell the exact uh, thing i mean i cannot really tell you <laughs> um, what exactly happened there i will i will show you the game um, F3, yeah, this kind of funny anti Grunfeld really got into um, into fashion in recent years. White is uh, playing with a quick long castle, sometimes really playing for this kind of crude age file attack, but on the other hand, it's also very interesting strategically as White has built up this uh, typical Grunfeld center, but um, with more pieces on the board than in the Grunfeld, where always on c3 the knight ex is exchanged. I don't want to do a big uh, theoretical um, overview here. Um, I will just um, say that this has been played before, all this to queen c1, 
Um, there were games by Caruana, earlier games, for example against uh, Gelfand in 2013 or against Aronian in 2012. In both of those games Queen E1 was, was played and Queen C1 here is uh, a newer move. Um, not a novelty but um, a newer idea. And this is at least to, according to my database the novelty H4 has been played before in a game. Um, and also bishop f4. Um, sorry, h4. Yeah, h4, e6, bishop g5, or h4, e6, bishop f4 has been played. Bishop h6 is new. Yeah, let's uh, see what happened a couple of moves later because I was quite surprised after e5 and uh, the next couple of moves if we look at this. Around here, I thought that uh, that Carlsen should have a substantial advantage, really. If you look at this, he pushed the knight back. And here, I just thought queen e3. Yeah, and uh, you need to believe me. Uh, this was my idea without engine assistance. And the engine, um, actually, it gives queen g5. Um, sorry, I need to delete it first, queen g5, f6, queen e3. But I really thought that this should be right because now the c-pawn cannot move as b6 is hanging. So queen e3 is um, is um, a good strategical move with a with a tactical point that c6, the free move, is not possible. And the dark squares in, in black's camp do not look too great if we look at uh, those squares, c5, b4, and so on. Not uh, Not too exciting. Why do I always have it in green? Can I do it in red? Yeah, red is nicer, right? Those uh, those squares are a bit a bit tricky. I mean, here, here white should be somewhat better. Also, knights are, good, are, are nicely placed on c3 and d3. Yeah, Carlsen played h5, and uh, after those moves, black got in c6, and he's uh, now getting rid of the the weak pawn here. Now, very quickly, the game enters a crisis. White opens up with f4. And um, right here, after d4, plays queen a3. Funny, funny move using this, this uh, pinning business here. And after a5, yeah, here the, here's a critical point. White could have played knight d5, after which, yeah, Maybe black is somewhat more comfortable, slightly more comfortable. He decided, however, to sacrifice a piece on b5, and uh, we get got to this possession position. White has two pawns for the piece, and uh, we have a queen trade. This was certainly uh, anticipated by Carlsen, but here, um, really, Caruana has um, has a very good position. It's it's a piece. And it's not uh, totally clear how white uh, white should draw this. Uh, funny transformation now with uh, this uh, fork. Check. So we had this position now. A very, very complicated endgame. White having three pawns sounds nice, but very often the piece is, um, is, uh, is stronger as it can help to pick up some of those extra pawns. And um, what I'm, what I was referring to when I started the first or played out the first moves of this game is I cannot tell you in the upcoming end game if Caruana could have won this. Um, so I'm a bit, I'm a bit spoiling the result. It ended in a draw at the end. Check. And um, I'm cannot, I don't really know if um, if he could have won. Um, my gut feeling is really telling me okay there must be some sort of win, but. It's not um, like it's easily shown by the computer or I know or I have a great idea myself. I mean, white always maintains uh, some activity and uh, black can of course easily play um, Check. Check, mate. into those kind of traps. <laughs> yeah, at um, the very least Check. he managed to to activate here. And um, I really don't know. There really should be a win somehow. Well, but it's not. It's really not easy. I mean, I'm really sure. I mean, that that there is no totally simple win. I'm pretty sure of that. 
Um, for example, here, here there is an interesting possibility after this. Maybe h6 is a move, intending to play rook to g5 and then regroup this. But is it winning? Yeah, well, rook and knight and uh, against rook is a draw. And if white manages to exchange the king side, yeah, g and h pawn against the h pawn, there's only two against one here on the queen side. I'm really not sure if this. Uh, I mean, this 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 looks like serious winning uh, winning chances, but still, it's not totally clear to me. In um, in the game, Carlson got uh, the B pawn rolling. Check. Yeah, the B pawn got uh, got into action, and in fact, he could Check. also sacrifice the G pawn. For Check. the activity, and here the engine already shows it as being uh, zero zero zero. The B pawn is uh, is giving enough Check. counterplay even with the piece down. Yeah, Check. I'm going through all this really quickly. The thing is, this easily could have warranted um, a deeper analysis for the game of the day. But uh, believe me, if you see the kayak in Akstein game, <laughs> you you have uh, a probably. Uh, you will understand why I went for this uh, for this game instead. Tough choice. I mean, this was interesting from an end game point of view, but the other game, to be honest, was so insane. I needed to needed to select this. Yeah, here after Rook um, Check. and a couple of more checks, they agree to a draw. There is um, there is nothing uh, nothing to be done. King e five wasn't played. I'm pretty sure this was the they they put the kings in the middle to uh, to signal the draw. Even this is a draw, of course, but why would he allow why to why to promote? Um, yeah, this was um, of course a very important game for the general standings. If Caruana had won this, it would have been of obviously uh, yeah fantastic, but still he has two wins in the back already from the first two rounds, and Carlsen is yet to win a game. So hmm, no, it's um, still still I guess um, ex a good result for Caruana. He probably will be disappointed considering the way it uh, it was played out but okay so kayakin akstein and uh, you're probably curious <laughs> um okay let's see we have a french defense the the so-called steinitz variation nowadays um on top level if the french is played it's normally this this line not bishop before in fact this is um, um a line that has a pretty um, a good theoretical standing at the moment. After bishop e3, black has um, a number of interesting options. And the one that the black player here chooses is a very forcing one, taking and queen b6. This is uh, in fact the line where, I'm not an expert, but where I know that white had um, some problems in, in recent times to prove anything. One thing is, white has a hard time not to sacrifice the b2 pawn. It's um, it's basically impossible um, to to play. I mean, you can. This kind of stuff is really not doing anything. You can go here. This is just too passive. Sometimes you can play a3 to uh, to save those uh, kind of uh, pawns. Yeah, as this is not a particularly great idea. But uh, the critical line is queen d2, as it is so often sacrificing the pawn, and black is taking it. Yeah, so black has snatched a pawn, but um, what's very important, he has this counterplay coming. We have a very forcing Check. sequence here, which um, looks a bit weird at first, but this has been played a number of times. And it's actually believed to be okay for black. Yeah, we, we went here. G3 was a novelty by Kayakin, by the way. And um, starting here, this game is, um, is getting really, really tense. It starts with king d2. Yeah, this is, I guess, an understandable move. White wants to use his rook. He cannot castle, obviously. And... Um, what is also White's main point is he wants to prevent Black from castling. The material situation is equal. 
Long term, black has the bishop pair and a good structure. What white has, he has the activity and he wants to make sure black is not getting the king out of the center. And he's really willing to do, uh, yeah, to do some things for that. Rook b1, bishop c6, and here we come to the point. Should white uh, retreat? No, what kind of move? What kinds of moves are there? Let's say rook b8. Yeah, for example, black will trade and castle, and it's not clear that white has anything at all. Yeah, it's um also this kind of idea quite often. This is not really putting lots of pressure on black. So Kayakin went for bishop c5. He just sacrificed the exchange, establishing this fantastic bishop of c on c5, preventing black from castling. Yeah, black took it. Yeah, There is really no point in not doing that. So he took it and rook c8. I guess fairly logical move. Rook c8, it introduces this idea and it's basically also the the only move that that makes uh, makes any great sense and now this is already a very tense position what what should white do there is a number there are a number of options that white can try an interesting move for example is knight to e4 <laughs> looks crazy at first but interesting takes queen d4 and white is threatening this really big check on d7, which is uh, it's a mate, yeah, <laughs> not just a check. The problem is black has check. counterplay with this check. Check. And this is preventing the mentioned queen d7 mate. Check. White can here check. And go for a perpetual check, but not more. Knight e4 is a spectacular move, but it's not working. Um, I think this idea also brought Kayakin to uh, to play the upcoming move. He played king to c1. Yeah, this is going out of queen g2 check, which I just showed, and um, it uh, sent, sets black a very difficult problem: what to move. White has a number of threats. One threat is king b2. Really that slow, king b2 getting out of this check as well. Yeah, queen f1 check. And then queen d4, a4. Yeah, queen d4, a4 would be checkmate. And it's very tough for black to uh, to do anything against that. This threat is really strong. Um, sometimes you can even play queen d4 immediately. If, if black plays that, for example, after queen d4, black just resigns the game. Queen a4 is over. It is very, very tricky now. What should black do? He played the move f6. This is the best move by far. And uh, overall, the quality of this game is fantastically high, I think. I mean, if you sit there with, with your coffee and um, switch on uh, a computer yeah, that tells you all, all kinds of things, it's nice, but they played it really excellently well, I must say. Okay, after f6, what is uh, what is happening? If white goes for the direct attack with queen a4, there is check. queen f1 check. This is the counterplay already mentioned. This is check. check. And here black can play queen c4 to prevent queen a4. So queen d4 is not winning. What about king b2? If we try to prepare all that, getting out of the checks, exactly then black has rook c7. Yeah, this say this saves the day. After rook b8, there's king f7, and this is the motivation between the f6 move, amongst others. But this is the main, the main point of it that you can actually get the king out of it. This position is not um, is not clear at all. White has an excellent compensation. But um, it's not totally clear how it should end. The computer is giving it a zero zero zero, finding some sort of perpetual. But okay, this still would have been interesting to to um, yeah to to be played out uh, over the board. One possible line just to to show a sample. Check. Is this? Yeah, looks um, very problematic at first, but. 
boom. <laughs> and a check. 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 Yeah. And around here we get to a point where one of the sides will will will, will, um, will give a perpetual. Takes, for example, queen d2. Fantastic move. Ignoring the whole thing here, but his black sets up a perpetual himself. Yeah, white white can check. also check here. This is not advisable. Check. But king h6 is securing the draw fg7 and now Check. black must give the perpetual super sharp super sharp position so this was king b2 yeah can look at you can look at all kinds of moves here rook g7 also interesting why not take the pawn yeah there's queen h6 gaining uh, gaining a tempo rook b7 rook c7 again this defense and um, here for example the move or the line takes 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 here king f7 seems to uh, be about equal funny <laughs> yeah um, for example just to show this here for example can be played queen f3 and now queen d5 is uh, is an enormous uh, idea and black has really no way to prevent that it's again a perpetual something check. along these lines check check and the draw very complicated i think actually that um, kayakin's move is the best one it, it it just puts the most pressure on black and he's playing again a boom move just takes on d5 what's the point of this move yeah black takes it it's uh, pretty much the only move and now white has an excellent uh, continuation he plays queen e2 and this is the most the most uh, fighting move white also could have taken on f6 but this is a pretty straightforward draw yeah why is it a pretty straightforward draw? rook c7 is being played and after check. this check, check, we get to this funny situation <laughs> with white being close to promoting the pawn after bishop d6. Um, takes, takes, uh, here I can even promote check. with this. Probably black has uh, something better here after f7. Is there a better defense? Yeah, bishop d6 is uh, probably okay, but you can also take here and just uh, allow white to promote. Yeah, the the move he played instead of taking is just putting more pressure on black. He played this the really strong move, queen e2. This is setting up the threat of capturing. Now rook c7 was played. And um, yeah, here there was also the possibility to again just take. Also after the trade, if white now check. takes, we get um, the same position that we had uh, seen before with um, a draw being the result with a perpetual from one side. But um, Kayakin really wanted uh, to, to, to win this and uh, he played it. Yeah, to, he tried to um, really play his hand to the, to the utmost. He now played e6. I think it's just very strong play. Yeah, white is a rook down. It's a, it's a full rook, but uh, what's the point? He wants to play queen a6, queen c6 in mate black. And this is a very, very substantial threat. The queen is also still covering f1, so you can safely capture. So there's no counterplay with the queen check here by the black. And uh, the funny thing is, yeah, what Atkestein now plays is the absolutely only move. Everything else will lose played bishop b6 you simply must give up this bishop here just putting it on pre to uh, after bishop b6 which is also for white the only move to castle black now castling on move 27 yeah, this is the kind of situations where you where you check on your on your score sheet that you actually allowed to castle <laughs> has my rook moved on h8 has my king moved no black's king has not moved it has moved a lot in the variations you had in your in your head but it's not really happened on the board so you can castle very funny 
Yeah, and now the direct follow-up is pretty clear. e7, rook e8 must be played, and bishop d8. So it's 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 really crazy. This bishop has uh, gone this funny journey now to d8 in order to cover the 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 lonesome <laughs> warrior on e7 <laughs> that has been um, pushed all the way into into black's camp. And black is just about holding this e6 square. Yeah, I played queen c8, getting the queen back and also covering e6. How to um, assess this position? Hmm. <laughs> very, very difficult. Um, I actually think uh, the most likely outcome is a draw. If we, um, if we, um, let's say, let's get rid of the arrows. If we look at this kind of configuration, the rook against the pawn and the bishop, this basically cancels each other out. White's bishop and pawn simply totally kill the rook. It cannot do much. So, um, and e7 is, uh, of course, a very strong pass pawn, always one, one step, um, yeah, to promotion. Um, so I really don't see any side winning this, but Kayakin is trying hard. I can tell you, he is trying hard. He um, activated Check. here. Yeah, a queen trade is, uh, is very welcome. Yeah, if black would Check. trade the queen, you can easily get into big trouble. If we uh, look at this, there is a quick pawn emerging on the queen side. Black does not want to trade queens, and um, now Kayakin is all, is using his king, yeah, just advancing here on the queen side. In the meantime, Akkestein Akkestein is uh, going for counterplay with h4. This is a really strong play. He uh, gets his rook suddenly active, probably on h4, and this is the only way also to activate the rook. He found the the way to play his position uh, in the most uh, active way possible and um, yeah now we are close to the to the time control on move uh, on move 40 and um, right here the game enters uh, yet another yet another crisis a4 played yeah covers covers b5 so that white's queen can actually move here um and now Akstein, Akstein is playing g5, yeah. And here, exactly here, um, we um, we see, I think this is Kayakin's only mistake in the game. It's it's a severe one, but okay, the whole, the whole position and the whole game is obviously very tough to play. He now took on, um, in the, sorry, he played queen d3, that was the mistake. He should have taken on g5. And it seems that this leads to um, this leads to a draw. He probably has overlooked something when he played queen d3. Why uh, should this lead to a draw? We can look at um, can look at a line. Um, queen c5 check. Yeah. Rook takes a uh, king takes. Sorry, and then yeah. this kind of perpetual yeah. is, uh, is is happening. Black really um, has no way to. Uh, to avoid that maybe he still wanted to try to win with queen d3 but it, it's really not materializing black now took on f4 and now this was played maybe here he had some um, he um, thought that this was good but black has the good move f3 and this is uh, helping him immensely this is much better than um, than a, than a somewhat a more passive move uh, for example black also could have thought about king uh, queen uh, d6 after that white has the funny Check. defense Check. like that with <laughs> with a queen sack it probably is ultimately insufficient but f3 is just stronger white must take that there is really no no other move and then queen e6 and now black is is uh, nicely coordinated the Queen and King stop the e pawn and g4 will fall. g5 played. Queen g6, yeah, note the mate threat, very important. Check. g6 check. And the king went back. Yeah. 
the only the only counterplay with uh, with g7 here it's um uh, it's a bit a bit of a desperation um, attempt but um here i think king f7 was more precise after that i really don't see any move for white he didn't play that but um after this i think black just uh, just grabs the material here this move that um Arctenstein played should win the game it's also also a win check white promoted and now tried for some last hope counterplay here with the queen yeah the, it looks strange oops sorry check this uh, bishop b6 looks strange to give up the pawn but um there really is there really is nothing uh, that you can do black is just um again coming with the rook trying to uh, to attack the white king check check yeah we we got this end game here yeah black being uh, an exchange up and he has those this this strong uh, passer it um it is a win yeah this end game f4 a5 but here exactly here in this position um we see uh, the black players only real big mistake after this uh, really fantastic fight he now played the move f3 and this is uh, unfortunately for him spoiling the win the thing is it seems that what black needs to do is quickly try to mop up both pawns then sacrifice the rook for the a pawn um this is basically what happened in the game but f3 seems to lose a tempo because it does not get both pawns if black plays rook g2 or king e6 is also possible let's do king e6 for example this would have won yeah or well, let's say come on let's not do this this is the easiest come on rook g2 king b7 and now black actually manages to take both pawns if we look at this this is important and now black gets in d4 and the f pawn moves to win the game there is no defense against this white um, if we look at this white cannot really um, save anything here if he tries to do this for example this is just far too quick yeah and uh, at the end the uh, the d pawn decides while the king is taking care of the h pawn the, the the f pawn here moving this now is, is it seems is absolutely not essential king b7 and now we see it, it's quite similar but the f pawn now this move has been lost so white couldn't take on h2 so we get a very comparable end game but with an h pawn and uh, this is in fact the draw white's king is approaching the d pawn but the bishop is, is stopping the f pawn yeah a fantastic fantastic struggle really kayakin for a very long time tried um, the absolute utmost <laughs> to win the game always um trying to to sharpen up things but Ackerstein put up a great defense really great and um here was very close to win i mean this was all very strong play also this this h5 using the rook on the h file was just a very very good game i think by both sides and uh, well those calculation errors they simply they simply occur in in such a complicated game also note that while well, you're sitting there for hours and it simply tires you to uh, to have this this wild stuff to be co uh, calculated all the time so uh, yeah it's um certainly um would have been great for for Arctestine to win the game of course but i think it would be uh, would be really um yeah unwise to be uh, to be totally uh, disappointed by this performance it was really a, a great fight and very enjoyable for the spectators yeah i hope you enjoyed uh, the coverage of this round
it wasn't so so easy to select the Caruana um, cards and Caruana game also was was very interesting this end game also deserves some closer examination but um, I decided for this because it was such a nice very very um, yeah um, I'm lacking a word here um, yeah two-sided is probably a, a wrong <laughs> a wrong um, a wrong word it was uh, a fight on on um, where both sides really uh, did a great job i mean it was not a very one-sided game okay i hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching and uh, the next round actually is uh, only played on saturday yeah so there's no round on friday friday the the six um only on saturday the seventh they will continue to play so don't wonder if there's no game tomorrow uploaded or no video uploaded. Thanks for watching.